Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is James Salvatore and today I have something different here for you. This is the all new 2020 Lincoln Aviator Reserve model. And in today's video, I'm gonna review it to help you better make your purchase decision. And then I'm gonna take it for a drive and tell you my thoughts on it. But before we get into things, be sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm because it really, really helps to promote the videos. And then subscribe and turn on the bell notification to be alerted when I post my future videos. On the channel, I do everything from new car reviews, new car comparisons, classic cars, exotics. I like to have fun, so be sure to stick around. And with that, cue the cinematic shots. For those of you who follow my channel, you know that I primarily stick to reviewing high-end luxury brands and sports cars. And some of you may be thinking to yourself right now, where does a Lincoln fit into all this? Well, to tell you the truth, a few years ago, it really wouldn't fit into my brand. In fact, you know, the cars were very dull and some would even say cheap looking, but that was the Lincoln of yesterday. Today's Lincoln is a different story. And for those of you that wrote this brand off in the past, trust me, I get it. But today I'm going to open your eyes to the new Lincoln. The Lincoln that could be mentioned in the same sentence as Audi, BMW, Mercedes, Range Rover, Jaguar, and various other luxury brands in confidence. On a side note though, if you'd like me to review any other Lincoln models in particular, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to accommodate that. The first thing you need to know about the Aviator is there's five different models. You have the standard one, you have the Reserve, you have the Grand Touring, the Black Label, and then the Grand Touring Black Label model. For today's video, we have the Reserve though. First, let's get performance out of the way because it's actually pretty impressive for an SUV. Under the hood, you'll find a three liter twin turbocharged V6 that produces 400 horsepower and 415 foot pounds of torque. And for the Grand Touring models, they add an electric motor to the original powertrain, which ups the power to 494 horsepower and an impressive 630 foot-pounds of torque. Next, I'm gonna talk about how practical this car is. And to do that, I'm gonna demonstrate rear leg room as well as cargo room in this car. For the first test, I've set up the driver's seat in my comfortable driving position, and I'm gonna see how well I fit behind myself in this car. Okay, getting into the rear of this thing, it's pretty comfortable. You know, I have a decent amount of leg room and headroom in this car is, I would say excellent because you could easily probably fit somebody who's 6364 back here. Now let's take a look at the third row of seats. Chances are they probably made them for kids, but I'm gonna try it just for the sake of it. Getting into the third row isn't as bad as I thought, especially with the captain's chairs. Once you get back here though, there really isn't much leg room and you could definitely tell that they designed this for I would definitely say children, but if you had to fit full-size adults back here, it is possible. Now let's move on to the cargo storage. When it comes to getting into the trunk, there's a few different ways. You have the comfort access feature where you wave your foot underneath the trunk and it opens, or you have the button right here to do it. As long as you have the key fob in your pocket, it'll open right up. Okay, as you can see, there's a fair amount of space down here. You could definitely fit some groceries and whatnot in there while having people in the third row seat, but if you need more storage, it's really easy to put down the seats. All you have to do is hit these buttons and they go down automatically. And if you need to put them back up, all you have to do is click the center button and it'll lift them both or lower them both at the same time. Very convenient. I like it. They did it well. Now let's take a look at the interior of this car and first discuss build quality because you know, for a lot of you, you're probably wondering how well this stacks up against German auto luxury brands. And I would say finally that this stacks up very nice. 
the first thing that you're greeted by is this nice high quality driver's information center and this nice large multi-touch infotainment system here. It's Sync 3, it's their newest system and it allows the ability to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And the standard system seems pretty nice too. I, you know, I have no complaints there. You could connect your phone via the USB-C or the USB 3.0 port down here and just kind of tuck your phone away and forget about it, which I like. You know, it's nice and easy to get to. It's not like you have to go in a glove box or anything. And another quick thing I'd like to point out is that they went back to a more traditional uh, climate control layout here, which was much needed. You know, in years past, they went with this touch capacitive thing when they were trying to be futuristic and it just simply wasn't good. This is nice. The buttons here feel high quality. You know, you have temperature readouts here. This feels nice to the touch. And, you know, I think they just did a good job with it. Good job, Lincoln. And then you have your parking assistance features here, where if you hit the camera button, you could see it goes to the surround view camera, which is pretty high quality. I still don't think it's on par with Mercedes and Audi, but, you know, it's definitely a good system. I would have liked to see some guidance lines in the front and the back when you know you put it into gear like Mercedes does, but you know every brand does it differently. However, one unique thing that Lincoln does that no other car brand has right now is it has Amazon Alexa integration into the software, which is honestly, in my opinion, genius. All these other brands right now are trying to come up with their updated uh, voice assistant systems and they're really good. Like, you know, hey Mercedes, hey Porsche, they all seem like they're trying to mimic Amazon Alexa with its functionality, but Lincoln actually has the real Amazon Alexa integrated in, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, you know, it adds a lot of functionality to the car. Not only does it control all the functions of the car, but, it also controls any smart devices you have within your home as well. So if you tell Alexa to turn off the lights at home or something, you can literally do that in, in your car, which kind of makes this car feel like, you know, like you're in, you're in Iron Man and you're Tony Stark with Jarvis and you're giving Jarvis commands. Well, I like the way that they're going with that. And I thought I'd just point that out because it's definitely something that I thought was really cool. The last thing that really stuck out to me was the Ultima Revel 3D audio system in this car. It's very, very powerful. The bass is very strong and, you know, it's very punchy too. Kind of reminds me of the Burmester 3D high-end surround sound system and the AMG GT that I reviewed a few months back. It's, it's just a really nice system and if you love listening to music loud like I do, you'll definitely appreciate it. But, you know, enough about the technology in this car. Let's see how it drives. All right, getting into this thing, my first impressions are really good. It's quiet. It's refined, and with this active air suspension, the ride is very flat and composed. I also like the driving position in this car. I mean, you know, in an SUV, you wanna feel like you're commanding the road, and this certainly gives you that feeling. I feel that they really paid close attention to the touch points in this car. You know, everywhere that you touch, look, and you know, feel is covered by leather, and the steering wheel in this car is covered by Napa leather, so it's nice and soft. And, has a really nice premium feel to it. You do feel like you're in a big car. You know, this doesn't this doesn't feel small, but to me that's not necessarily a bad thing. And with these crazy super adjustable seats, I mean, honestly at this point everybody's probably seen the commercials by now, but they're actually really cool having experienced them for the first time. I mean, I even have an adjustment for my upper back to be more upright, and for me that actually is making me a lot more comfortable in this car. This car has a very distinct different feel from uh, other German competitors. You know, this car, you know, feels composed and it corners very flat and it gives you the confidence that you need to go around turns at a decent speed, but it's very soft. It's very, very comfortable. It, it's like it, it wafts, you know, like old school luxury. And I like that they kind of are giving you that old school American luxury feel, you know, instead of looking, instead of focusing on performance with this car. I mean, by no means is it a slouch. I mean, with the 415 horsepower V6 in this car, it gets out of its own way very good. I like how smooth the power delivery is in this car. You know, it's it doesn't, you know, it has a decent amount of horsepower, but 
it, it doesn't feel fast. That's not really what Lincoln was trying to focus on here. And I like that and I respect it because they were going for an overall luxury experience. You know, a lot of luxury cars today try to be too many things in one, jack of all trades and master and none. But this car is so smooth, so quiet and so composed that, you know, I feel like they've really accomplished what they were going for here in making, you know, a luxury mid-sized SUV. For me, what this car reminds me of, but still is very different from it, is the uh, Mercedes GLE because the Mercedes, because the Mercedes GLE had active air suspension, and you know that too was a very comfortable ride. This is similar to it. You have a few different modes in this car, and I like the names that they have. You know, everybody has these generic uh, names, you know, like Sport, Sport Plus, Individual Mode, and whatnot. But in this car, you have Excite you have conservative, you have normal, then you have slippery and deep snow condition mode, which to me is, uh, you know, pretty neat that they're going for, you know, a unique naming scheme. Well, I feel like they've really done a good job at listening to what everybody didn't like about them, and they've just completely changed. I mean, when it comes to their naming scheme, you know, they used to have all those letters, now they're calling cars the Aviator, the Corsair, the Navigator, it sounds cool and it all fits together. I really like the heads up display in this car. I get to experience between the brands that I drive a lot of heads up displays, but this one in particular to me is very clear and it offers all the information you need. Like right now, as I look over this hood, I'm looking at what time it is, the temperature out, the speed, the speed limit, and how much fuel I have left. And really what more information do I need? Again, I really want to emphasize how comfortable this car is. I'm on a bumpy road around town that in my car, you know, I have more of a sporty car. You, you really feel everything and it's annoying. But in this car, I, I barely feel any of the bumps and you don't hear it either. A lot of cars are very comfortable, you know, like, but you still hear all the impacts. This car, they've done a great job when it comes to sound cancellation and overall sound deadening in this car. Once again, as you approach the turns, you can actually feel this car slightly leveling itself out, which I like. One thing that I forgot to point out earlier is that this car has active LED headlamps. I just thought I'd throw that out there because as it gets darker, I just realized I forgot to cover that point, but it's a, it's a very nice system, definitely equal to any German car that I've driven. This car doesn't make me want to drive it fast. I just want to get to where I'm going and I don't mind if I take an extra 10 minutes because this thing is just so comfortable and between all the amenities, you know, the LED ambient lighting that you have in here, it's just so calm and relaxing. And it's nice to see that Lincoln's finally found its identity again because if they keep on producing cars like this, <laughs> the German brands definitely have something to worry about. Overall, I recommend this car to somebody who's looking for a very luxurious driving experience, somebody who's not looking for something that's trying to be sporty, somebody who wants to just have a car that when they hop in after a long day of work and you know they got to take the family out, they just want a nice, relaxing ride because that's what this delivers. And you know what? I'm, I'm really proud to say that there is an American luxury brand, once again, that is producing high quality cars that actually feel worth the price that they're charging. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found it informative and helping you make your decision. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to help me out by smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm because it really helps to promote the videos. And be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out when I upload future videos. Before we go though, I'd like to say a special thanks to Stevens, Ford, and Lincoln of Milford, Connecticut for making this video possible. They have a lot of new models in their inventory, so be sure to go to their website and check them out. With that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.